<laughs> We're going to continue on how to simplify some radical expressions. Now, really, this simplification works on just one principle. It's just one little principle, and you guys have seen this for a long time. In fact, you've simplified radicals before. We're just going to make them, of course, a little bit more advanced for this class. Simplifying radicals works on one little rule. It's called the product rule for radicals. And here it is. It says, if you have a square root of a times b, a square root can be broken up. The product can be broken up. For instance, if I have a square root of a times b, that comes down to the square root of a times the square root of b. In fact, I showed you that before. In fact, I previewed this section before in section 10.1. I kind of told you what we're going to do already in this section. But this lets you solve or simplify a lot of these radicals. I'm going to put this a little bit, well, I'll give you an example first to prove that it's true by one example. Then I'll make this in general for you. So, Here's a little quasi-proof. If I have the square root of 36, I know the square root of 36 is, well, that's 9 times 4, right? You follow me? Oh, mm -hmm. According to this product rule, I should be able to separate the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. How much is the square root of 9? 3. How much is the square root of 4? 2. And that is equal to? 6. How much is the square root of 36? That it does work. Okay, so if we can break up some number or some quantity as a product, I can split that radical up, do each of the radicals individually, and multiply their results, or those, those products, and that will give me the same answer as if I would have done it normally. Does, are you following this? Mm -hmm. Now, not only does this work for square roots, this works for any type of root. Don't forget the end. A lot of people lose the end. Whatever that power is, or whatever that root is, you've got to keep that root. Also, I need you to know that this works both ways here. If I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 7, can I multiply those roots together? Well, that's what this says as well. It says if I have an a nth root, times an nth root, I can put them under the same nth root. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try it. If I have a square root of set 2 times a square root of 7, what type of root am I going to get? Square root of 13. Still a square root. Sure, it says the same, same root, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Same root. Square, and then what do I do with the 2 and the 7? 2 times 7. So that's a square root of 14. That works. We can put some roots together as well. How about that one? Are these roots able to be put together? Can we put those those things under the same root? Yeah. What lets you know that? Okay, so let me ask you a question. If I had this, could I do it? No. No. That's not what this says. This says the ends have to be the same. So what we're looking for when we're combining our roots, we're looking to see if we first have the same root, and then we're going to multiply the radicands, whatever's inside there. So, what type of root are we going to have, ladies and gentlemen? Fourth root. Fourth root of? Six times three x squared. Good. How much is six times three x squared? Eighteen x squared. Okay. Twenty-five. Is there anything I can do to simplify that the rest of the way down? Let's see. Can you think of a fourth root? A fourth root that divides 18. Can you think of that? No. I can think of a square root. I can think of, uh, I'm sorry, a perfect square. I think of 9, but that you can't find the fourth root of 9. You find the square root of 9. We're doing the fourth root. We'll deal with how to simplify that in just a little bit. Let's try one more for today, and then I think we'll be done.
does it still work with fractions? Yeah. Can I put together some roots if they're still if they're fractions? Yeah. Can I put together these roots? What do you think? Yeah. They're both square. Okay, so if I put them together, I'm just going to have the square root of 3 over x times y over 2. When you're multiplying those fractions, you would check for anything that you can simplify. Can I simplify anything in this expression? No. Uh, so we're going to have just a square root of 3y over 2x. That's as far as we can go. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far, what we talked about. All right, next time we'll talk about the quotient rule. I'll show you how to simplify radicals in general. That'll be a good day. Well, I guess it'll be on Wednesday. So last time we were talking about the product rule for radicals, and we said that no matter what our root is, if we have the product as a radicand, we can split up that root as a product of two roots. For any f root, that doesn't really matter. Square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, anything. What we're going to talk about today is the quotient rule and then how to apply these things to any radical and we're going to be able to simplify them. So the quotient rule says something very similar to this product rule. It says if instead of a product you have a quotient inside of any nth root, similar to our product rule, we can break that thing up. We can do nth root of the numerator over nth root of the denominator. And that's legal too. So products and quotients we can both break up. For example, if you have something like this, a square root or any other type of root for that matter, let's say it's a square root this time of 9 25ths. All this says is as long as we take the root of the numerator and the root of the denominator, both of them, we'll be okay. So here we'd have the square root of 9 over the square root of 25. This lets us simplify this expression. How much is square root of 9 over square root of 25? Or say the square root of y over 36. Now, when we do split this up, we could do the square root of y, for sure, and the square root of 36. Now, while we can't simplify the square root of y, we can simplify the square root of 36. So not all the time are you going to be able to simplify both the numerator and denominator, but maybe one of them you can to make this thing a little bit easier. Which one, what, what are we going to have when we simplify the square root of y over the square root of 36? Square root of y over 6. Good, so the square root of y, nothing happens. Square root of six, or sorry, square root of thirty-six gives you six. So in one case we have a square root, in the other case we don't. That's legal. That's okay. We can have a square root on the top or the, the bottom, numerator, denominator. This also works with any other type of root that we have. So for instance, if we have say a cube root, it's still legal to split those up. I said for any nth root, so it doesn't really matter what our root is as long as we keep the same process. So in the square root of uh, the cube root of twenty-seven sixty-fourths. We just got to make sure we keep that a cube root and don't, you know, misinterpret that as a square root. So we can't lose that little three as our index. How about the cube root of 27? What do we have? So we get three for the 27 and the cube root of 64. Yeah. You getting good at those cube roots yet? I hope so. There's only a few numbers you can take the cube root of through 125. Let's practice one more and then we'll learn how to simplify this in any context. Let's practice with a fifth root. Of 7 over 32x to the fifth. First thing we know is that any type of root we can separate a quotient. That's the quotient rule for us. So we're going to have a fifth root of 7. We're also going to have a fifth root of 32x to the fifth. Ladies and gentlemen, can you simplify the fifth root of seven? No. No, no I can't think of any number multiplied by itself that gives you seven. You can do it five times, it doesn't really work. Now the fifth root of 32x to the fifth, that's something we should be able to simplify. Let's think of the 32, everyone just do this in your head real quick. The fifth root of 32, what number times itself? Five times gives you 32, do you know it? Two, Two works, very good. So while I'm not able to simplify the fifth root of 7, the fifth root of 32x to the fifth, I'm going to start off with a 2. How about that x to the fifth? Can you simplify a fifth root of x to the fifth? Yep. Mm -hmm. How much did I give you? X. Why x? 
how does it cancel out? What are we doing when we're canceling it out? Put X in parentheses and fit power on the outside. Same, same power and the same, same root. So as long as we have the same power and the same root, we've got it. I think you were both saying the same thing about the power and the root being, being the same. Is there anything else that we can do on that problem? No. We're done. That's as far as we can go as far as simplifying our radicals. How many people feel okay with the product rule and the quotient rule at this point? Good. This row, you guys okay with it so far? Okay. Now, when we simplify radicals in general, we're going to be using a combination of these two rules. We'll be using the product rule and the quotient rule. So this really, it's, it's our bread and butter for this particular section. We're going to be using this almost constantly in combination with the idea of this one. Remember how I showed you two ways to do that, as a matter of fact? A long time ago, I previewed this information. We're going to be using the second way <coughs> to simplify those roots. All right, here's our goal, ultimately. The goal for simplifying radicals, which we're going to do right now, what we're going to be doing is looking for perfect nth roots. So it depends on what type of root you have to what you're looking for inside of your radicand. So if we have a square root, we're going to be looking for perfect squares. If we have a cube root, we're going to look for perfect cubes. If we have a fourth root, we're looking for perfect fourth powers. So what we're looking for when we're simplifying the radicals are perfect nth roots. On this book, they're perfect nth numbers, like square numbers or cube numbers. Let's do a couple of basic examples. We're going to start off with just some numbers, just practicing simplifying these things. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. Um, remember this this process, I asked you some square roots. You guys were pretty good at that. Square root of 64 is, hopefully not. Square root of uh, 81. Square root of 25. Square root of 144. Of 196. Square root, yeah, 14. Square root of 169 is 13, square root of 196, you reverse it as 14. That's kind of cool, right? The square root of 225? Just go one higher. 15, very good, all right. Well, we got the hang of this, right? 14.7, I don't know. No, it's, it's 15. Uh, square root of 36. Okay, that's it. Now, when we say the square root of 18, can you do that? No. You can't give a whole number answer for it. However, using this idea we're going to be able to simplify it to make it at least a little bit smaller inside of a radical. That's the goal. I'm sorry.